Hi guys, um, I'm just going to do a couple of phone grips real quick because I just coated two cups and I have some leftover epoxy and they're a good way to use extra if you're not doing molds. Um, I'm just going to work on white because I like the way they show up better. So I pop them up first. I feel it gives me a better surface to work on. I'm working them flat and I can grab the bottoms and whatever. So I'm just going to do, I think I've got enough for about six of them quick. I am going to use some assorted mica powders. Whatever, whatever ones you have will be fine. I've got a variety. Um, you know, some of them are these bagged sets. Anything will work. You can use alcohol inks to color them, micas, whatever you have. And I'm also going to use some of this leafing product in gold, silver, and maybe some copper. The end result will be more of this type. Okay, so I need a couple of little mixing cups. These are just medical, you know, medicine cups. My leftover epoxy. I don't need much per color. I may not have enough to do all six of these. We'll see. So I'm just going to divide up the extra into a couple of different cups. I don't really need all of these ones I got out. Um, micas, you only need a tiny, tiny bit. I really like one more. Grab a stick over here. Okay, these two I'm not going to use, so I think I want a purple, very, very tiny bit. I only have a tiny bit of epoxy left, so tiny, tiny mica. Excuse me. That is all that is needed for that. And I think I'll use this blue green. It's very pretty. Again, tiny, tiny bit. Sorry, I keep going off the frame. So there's two colors. This is almost a hot pink. I'll use a little dash of that. Some of these are shaker style, so it should be enough. Oh, I need two more. Stir. What else? I got this darker blue. It's 
extremely bright. Not much of that one, but that's fine. That green's the same. Oh. Maybe. Maybe this pale peach blossom pink. Okay. So I think I'll do the first one. Probably only have enough of this blue for one. But I'm just going to take a tiny bit because it only takes a tiny bit. You want to try and keep it. Sorry about that. Try and keep it on the edge. It will pull back a little bit, um, as epoxy tends to do with micas. It will dome a little bit on its own, just because of the nature of the shape. It's not in a cup, so it's not going to crawl up. So I'll do that. Enough to do another one of those, the smaller section, maybe. It doesn't really matter what shape it is, where the two meet is where you're gonna go um, fill in with the leafing. Some people like to use sheets and break them up. I feel that the flakes work pretty well. Sorry, I keep going off frame. Done with that one. I'm gonna put this on this one. You do want to try not to get any on the bottom. If you do go over, you want to try and immediately get it with a baby wipe because it's very difficult to get off once it sets up on these grips. Okay, that one is ready. I'm going to put some of that on one side of one of these. Actually, I'm gonna run it right down the middle. Put this green over on this one. Maybe some pink, since I haven't used any of that yet. It's 
see like I dribbled off a little bit on this one. You can try and wipe it off with your glove. If not, grab a wipe and clean it up as quick as possible. I haven't touched the purple yet, so we'll go in with some purple. So I'm going to move so I don't drip on it. You can freeform your shapes any way you like. Use as much or as little as you want for each section. You can do them solid and just run a vein of leaf through it if you prefer. I was going to put the hot pink on that one, but I think I'm going to do the purple on there. And then I'll do a hot pink and pink on the last one. It's okay to swirl them together just a little bit if you like. That's done. Let's see. Hot pink. Maybe I'll finish this one first. That was that. So I'm going to go back into this one with some green. Some of these are super shimmery compared to others. I think I want to break up that and come this way a little bit. Okay. Hot pink. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to put on the other side of the purple. I think that blue that's up there in the corner. And I'm going to fill the rest of that one in with the rest, last little bit of the pale pink. The more you work with epoxy, the more you'll get a feel for how much you need for any given project. Um, Again, this is just a good way to use up leftover from tumblers or any other projects. As are molds, I didn't really have enough leftover for molds. Um, all totaled, this was probably 10 milliliters that I started with. I do have enough of this blue and green left to probably do one more. Um, Sorry, I'm set up at an odd angle and it's proving challenging. Let me mix some of that in a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab one more because I hate to waste materials. <clears throat> this is how mine come packaged. Um, I don't put them back in the bags they come in. I like to put them on a card, personally. I can save the bags for other stuff or not. They all come with a good 3M grip. My phone has one on the bottom that's been on there since the beginning of October. And 
I have worked it very hard to test it. <coughs> Sorry about that. I don't put anything out to you guys that I don't make for myself first and put it through the paces before I offer it up. With very few exceptions. So I think I'm going to keep the green more towards the middle on this one and surround it with the blue. Make a landmass surrounded with water. And that finishes that up. Whoops. Gotta level back out, hopefully. Otherwise, I'll smooth it back out. Um, your epoxy will generally have a working time of 30 minutes to an hour depending on the brand, always read the safety sheets for your epoxy and the working times and proper mixing methods. All of the ones I use are a straight one-to-one -one ratio. Um, I don't get into any that you have to measure. I do occasionally use a UV set epoxy, which requires a UV light. Um, just depends on the project. But typically, I prefer a one-to-one, -one and that's what I stick with. So, I have these seven ready to go. Um, this is the fun part. This is where I'm going to add the flakes. This is what they look like in the jar. If they're too big, you can break them up, but usually dragging them across the epoxy will break them up. That's the copper, which I think I'm going to use on the pink. Um, sometimes it'll stick to this lid topper, which is perfect, because then that's pretty much all I have to use. Um, that's the gold. And silver. And I am going to try not to get any of these little flakes flying into my cups that are right off to my right. Okay. Not that pair. I like to use just my little stabby tweezers for this project. So I'm going to jump right in. This one is going to get some silver. Like I said, if they're too big, you can just break them up. Um, I typically don't mind them bigger because you can sort of flex them down into the epoxy and around and it will break up on its own some. Um, I am not going to probably add a clear coat on top of these so there will be a little bit of texture to it. Um, I like the look of them without the clear coat. But if you wish to, you can coat over the top. But it's not sharp or prickly, generally speaking. So it's okay if it has a little bit of texture. You do want to try and make sure nothing's sticking, like, way ridiculously up. But that's all I'm going to do with that one. I'm just going to wipe the tip of this off in case there's any color on it where I don't want it. This one might get a little bit more because that came out kind of boring. So I'm just going to take a fairly large chunk and plop it right down. Because this one particular blue doesn't seem to have a lot of um, texture to it. I'm just going to work off the excess that I don't want. And I 
and you can manipulate it. You can go back in with your popsicle stick if you want and push it around more. Um, bring some of the color onto the top if you'd like. There is no right or wrong to any of this. You just want to make sure that they're stuck enough that they're not going to flake off in your hand or a customer's hand. I think I'm going to put a tiny bit over on this edge too. Manipulate it and work it until you're happy. If you go over, clean it up. If you need to go back in with a baby wipe and clean it up more, do that. Again, I'm going to wipe these off a little bit. I'm going to go in with some of the copper, which this is way too much. So break it up a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how I want it to sit on this one because that little swirl in the center is pretty. The copper in this particular one has a little bit of a rose gold look to it, so. I think it'll be pretty on the pink. I'm going to let it trail back off this edge and call it good. Voila. Okay, I think this pink and purple, I'm gonna go back to my silver. Break it up some. And this is fine that it's sticking to my glove. I can work right off of the glove, it doesn't matter. Do a little vein in here. Little dog hair. Okay. And that one sets. I'm going to grab a baby wipe real quick. I'm just grabbing a baby wipe to actually wipe them off for a minute because I'm getting a bit built up. I'm going to grab some gold. A chunk of gold. Just going to break it up a little bit on the lid. And I'm going to go into this one. And I got a dog hair. I do have a golden retriever. He doesn't come in this room, but I neglected to take my sweatshirt off before I started. So 
those of you with pets understand you just have to keep an eye out for it and pull them out while your epoxy is wet and it won't hurt anything just wasn't super vigilant like I said I normally take my sweatshirt or whatever I was wearing off when I go to work with epoxy and today I didn't sorry out of frame again I'm gonna leave this one like that I think gold's kind of overtaken by the blue these will also settle out a little bit more epoxy is self-leveling so it'll kind of smooth itself out some more I'm gonna go ahead and put copper on this one I think again it's got that really solid blue this one particular blue has like no sheen to it So I'll have to figure out which container that was and make a note of it. But if I want some sheen, that is not the blue to go for. And it just takes a tiny bit of this leafing for this. I expect these containers that I bought from Amazon to last me a very long time. I haven't used them on a tumbler yet. That is on my list of fun tumblers for eventually when I have time. I have a couple orders to finish up and then I can maybe switch gears to something fun. And I do think I got a little piece of silver leaf on one of these tumblers that I will have to pick off when I am done with this last one. This one, I think we're gonna go back to silver. I think I'm going to follow this natural ridge around. Manipulate it a little bit so it doesn't look so much like I'm making an H. Maybe a little more. Tuck that down a little bit. And that is it. So that is how I do foam grips with the metal flakes in them. Again, I will show you a couple of the finished ones if I can figure out where I put them back down. I prefer to do a white base for these because on a black, you can't, this one does look cool, but it's very hard to see any of the color on black. These ones are done dry. They need to get carded and sent out to my retail space. Um, sometime this week, next week. But that is all. If you have any questions, sorry I was out of frame so much, let me know. Thanks.